Hi guys, Sherry here from No Fox Curving Crew. How's it going? So I felt a little guilty for um, making the reading so short, uh, the Divine Masculine and Feminine reading. Um, so I thought I would do an impromptu reading, uh, twin flame reading, for the current energy uh, for this weekend. I hope you're all doing well. Um, also, I just wanted to mention if uh, you've ordered a reading and I, you haven't received yet, um, I do have a lot of readings to go through and I apologize for the delay and I thank you for your patience once again. Um, and I just wanted to mention also that um, if I come across an energy that is being impatient or needy about their reading, um, I may return payment for that. So please check your energy, guys, because it is really taxing on me uh, to do these readings and, you know, to get them out on time. So um, it, you know, it can drain my energy when I come across negative um, messages. <laughs> okay, so I love you guys so much, and I really appreciate your support. I really do. Um, but. I am only one person. Okay, so I think I'm going to pull the cards first so I can get the deck out of the way and then I will go through each position. Okay, so I'm also using my card as clarifiers, so I've already shuffled those. All right, so today is August the 25th. So, beginning with the feminine past position, Eight of Pentacles. So this card talks about um, movement forward in the 3D world. So it is gaining abundance and stability, you know, financial freedom, basically and using those resources to move you forward towards the sun towards your goals so there's a sense of you know the feminine really manifesting um, abundance into her life and she feels like she's moving forward and you know i get a lot of freedom independence kind of energy here the page of cups King of Swords and the Eight of Swords. So the Page of Cups is a messenger. So this is a message of love. So there could have been some commu communication in the past um, or a desire to start a new relationship. Um, so this page is also a muse as well. So you, you could be inspiring somebody to be poetic, you know, to feel this love within themselves and desiring to express that or vice versa. Um, but I feel a strong sense of a new beginning of love, communicating that love. So in the present moment, we have the King of Swords. And the King of Swords could represent an air sign. But again, this talks of communication. He is, you know, the ultimate communicator. Um, he makes decisions, he takes action. This is clarity. Uh, so this could be the feminine making a decision, whoops, or, uh, or the masculine, but it's cutting away barriers and taking action. The future position is the Eight of Swords. Um, so, you know, it's a mental prison. It's a self-imposed prison of the mind. It's a feeling like you can't move forward, like you feel stuck. So, you know, with the Eight of Pentacles, we have this positive movement forward, um, feeling of success. That's the main card. Um, so either some communication came in that is making you feel, you know, like you're separated and, you know, um, imprisoned or you release yourself from that prison. You take that sword um, and release yourself. So if this represents a divine masculine, um, 
you know, it could be he spoke his truth. There was, you know, a detachment of emotions in order to speak that truth. Um, yeah, that's all I'm getting. Okay, so the masculine recent past position. The seven of swords. So this is deception, feeling like somebody's lying to you, stabbing you in the back. Um, you don't know if you can trust your thoughts or trust a person. The Page of Cups. Oh, sorry, <laughs> the Seven of Cups. The Knight of Wands and the Ace of Pentacles. So, um... The Seven of Cups is having a lot of options, knowing what your goal is, knowing what you want emotionally, because um, water is emotions, um, but not knowing how to get there. So there's a sense of um, retreating, going within and listening to your heart to guide you. So it seems to me a decision was made, and so here we got the Knight of Wands, and this is a blast a fiery, passionate blast forward. Um, and it could have to do with spirituality or just pursuing something that makes you excited and come alive, passionate, you know, your desires. Um, and then we have the Ace of Pentacles. So this is a brand new beginning in the 3D reality and it represents abundance or it's a windfall card. So it could be a gift from the universe. But really it's like, you know, that seed being planted a decision to start something new in the 3D reality. So it seems to me like the masculine was in a state of confusion and not knowing if he could trust his heart or trust, you know, um, you know, trust that he can move forward with this new beginning. So there's a sense of contemplation, questioning, um, hesitation and then sudden blast forward so there seems to be a new beginning starting um, you know that seed was planted in the past so for the feminine present position oh be careful this is actually union energy okay present position <clears throat> so the four of swords rest and rejuvenation um, so the feminine is in a meditative state right now. She is um, withdrawing from negative thoughts, negative energy, and she's healing herself. She's healing her heart. Um, and she's making decisions about the 3D reality. Ten of Swords. Eight of Pentacles. And the Solar Plexus Chakra. So, past position, Ten of Swords. So, the feminine has been through the dark night of the soul. Um, and you can see that there's a progression here from the eight to the ten. So, something ended in the past. Um, and so, these could be, you know, like I said, negative thoughts that you're presently retreating from or a negative situation, but something ended. And that is allowing for a new beginning to come through. The Eight of Pentacles is the same card here. So work is on the feminine's mind. Manifestation is on the feminine's mind. And again, she's using that feeling of positive movement forward and success to continue to um, build hope and groundedness. The Solar Plexus Chakra is in the future position. So she, you know, the first three chakras, like I always say, is where the parasites live, your fears, your lack of confidence, your um, feeling of safety. And this card speaks about strength and courage in order to do something. So in the future position, she is going to require strength and courage in order to, to do something. I mean, this card speaks about, you know, making decisions. Um, finding stillness in order to listen to your intuition to guide you but really it's a healing energy so I think I might pull an Osho Zen card for that uh, 
I hope you guys can hear me better. I realized that the volume was turned down. <laughs> so, yeah, my bad. And I, I agree, the, the music is super distracting, so I will just do the videos this way. All right. Wow, the master, the master. So that has to do with the solar plexus chakra. So it's almost like, you know, this, this point of illumination and a blast of courage and strength so, I mean, the rest of the reading will give me more clarity, but I'll read this card to you. It's like she feels a sense of accomplishment, like, wow, okay, oops. Uh -huh. The master in Zen is not a master over others, but a master of himself. His every gesture and his every word reflects his enlightened state. He has no private goals, no desires that anything should be other than the way it is. His disciples gather around him not to follow him, but to soak up his presence and be inspired by his example. In his eyes, they find their own truth reflected, and in his silence, they fall more easily into the silence of their own being. Okay, so that's going back to this rest and rejuvenation falling into the silence of their of your own being that's beautiful um, the master welcomes the disciples not because he wants to lead them but because he has so much to share together they create an energy field that supports each unique individual in finding his or her own light if you can find such a master you are blessed if you cannot keep on searching learn from the teachers and the would-be masters and move on um, and then it says, keep moving on. So, yeah, there's this power and silent strength that uh, the feminine will be stepping into in the future position. So let's see what the rest of the reading says. Okay, so, ooh. Oh yeah. uh, the uh, masculine present position, the sun, wow. So this is the most positive arcana, or most pos positive card in the deck. Um, so this is being illuminated, being in the spotlight, shining your light. Um, it's excitement, enthusiasm, a new beginning. Um, and it's also a return to innocence as well. So the sun is masculine energy and empowerment. Five of Swords. Seven of Wands and Ace of Swords. So past position, Five of Swords. This is walking away from conflict, arguing, negative energy, finger pointing. Um, so we can see that kind of energy reflected in the Seven of Swords. Um, you know, there was a situation that the masculine left very quickly. Um, and so the present moment here is the seven of wands. So this is speaking up, expressing yourself. Um, you know, the six of wands is success and victory. You're the rock star. Um, everybody sees you as an example. You're standing in the light. And so the seven of wands is one step higher than that. You're like the king of the hill. Um, there's this massive feeling of self-empowerment for sure that I'm feeling right here. Um, the Eight of Swords is making a decision, uh, grounding an idea into reality. There's a sense of vulnerability that goes along with this card because the feminine, there's a feminine represented here as being naked and vulnerable, like exposed. Uh, it's also a victory card as well. So the future position, the masculine will express himself with passion um and clarity and it may have to do with making decision to start you know have this new beginning because you know the sun card is a, a one right 
then 9 plus 1 is 10, it reduces to 1. So it's a brand new start. And so it, it's like a moment of clarity and decision made is what I feel. And like this, it's almost like, you know, the sword Excalibur is thrusted into a rock. Shit falls. The camera jumped off the tripod there. Jesus Christ, scared the crap out of me. Okay, oh, hey, hey. so I don't even remember what I was saying, so I'll just carry on. <laughs> Give me a heart attack. Jesus Christ. Okay. So, for the feminine near future position, temptation, the devil. So, this is a chain in the, the 3D. So, a codependent relationship, an addiction. Um, or just a belief that you are not good enough, that somehow you are lacking in some way. So this is the ego. Um, you know, and here we have a key with a heart on it, and it's like the feminine is questioning whether or not she should take that key. And, you know, so it, I'm, I'm feeling a lot of fear with this card. Let me just shuffle the deck again so you don't... I think I'm messing with the cards. Okay. So, past Ten of Cups, Page of Swords, and the Knight of Pentacles. Okay, so past position. The Ten of Cups, this is a happily ever after. Um, so this is a completion, ten. It is harmony, peace, um, you know, a very, very deeply loving relationship. And it's harmony within families as well as within romantic relationships. So the past, the feminine, will feel or, or felt a deep love for the masculine or was in a state of deep love and felt this happily ever after. However, the devil is standing in the way. The page of swords represents communication. So over here we have the ace of swords, which is communication along with the seven of wands. So it's passionate. Um, so in the near future, <laughs> oh my freaking God. Okay. So that time I had put the camera back on the tri tripod uh, with the power button kind of activated so I don't know um, exactly how much of that was recorded so I will repeat myself here um, so the feminine near future position is the devil um, temptation um, this is the ego codependent relationship addiction or self-limiting beliefs so it's a chain holding the feminine back from feeling this you know, happily ever after, a feeling of completion that she felt in the past. She felt this true love and, you know, like she arrived at this blissful state. The Page of Swords in the present near future position is communication. Over here we have the Ace of Swords, which is also communication. It's neat how we have two Aces in the future. Um, so this is, you know, the double communicator. Um, Pages are messengers, sword communication. So open, honest communication. And um, this also talks about having ideas, formulating plans. Okay, then the future position, we have the Knight of Pentacles. Um, and here I have a man on a tight rope. Um, so it's, you know, all about balance and movement forward, taking one step at a time. And it shows a journey that either that both twins have been on and it's you know been a it's lasted a, a very long time but this a sense that the night is about to arrive you know um at his destination at the ten of pentacles so the near future there was this dream of a happy ending a happy life and it seems to me that through some communication um, there is manifestation or this could also mean that there's still that there's movement forward and he hasn't arrived yet but he's about to however the devil is 
the main position card. So this means that there is a blockage standing in the way, stopping that that knight from, you know, taking that final step. Okay, near future for the masculine. The Two of Pentacles. I'm going to give my cards an, another shuffle. Oops. Okay, so the Two of Pentacles is movement, choices, decisions. So here in the past, we see that Ace of Pentacles being planted. And the Two of Pentacles is that seed um, taking root. Okay, and it's starting to change the environment. And so... Uh, Maslin may feel a little unsteady, unste like he's being pulled in two different directions. But you can hear, or you can see in this picture here that this figure is looking at this relationship, a commitment. Um, you know, there's a lot of options here. There's gold. Um, you know, here it's like a, a, a stillness of mind. There's clouds with, you know, which re represents thought. Here is manifestation, earth energy, um, love, and then, like I said, um, finances. So there's a lot of options here. And that kind of, again, repeats that similar energy of questioning, not knowing which way to choose. But ultimately, the choice has been made, and now the environment is transforming. The moon chariot and the sun wow the moon and the sun okay so what I'm feeling strongly here is the eclipse energy um, you know eclipse means to cut away something to end something and over here we've got the ten of swords which shows that eclipse that ending the completion and the Ace of Swords has that same energy, you know, taking that Ace of Swords and cutting away barriers that are holding you back. So, yeah, there's this, this shift in energy that I, I feel very strongly, especially the past couple of days, which is kind of what has prompted me to do this reading. It's like, for some reason, lately, I've been you know feeling this call to come home to go home and you know for me that's like a three-day drive from where I live now I'm on the west coast and um, my home is in the middle of Canada so you know there's a sense of loneliness a, a sense of detachment and you know so <clears throat> either you know it has to do with wanting family and friends, you know, around you, or me, I should say, or, you know, this, this sense of home would, can be coming from the masculine energy and that need to return, to be, you know, to be one. So anyway, um, what I'm feeling is with the eclipse, it's like something kind of snapped or something you know that there's a shift in perspective that happened from a darkened state to to more positive state and here we have the sun being eclipsed by the moon um, so over here we have the sun in his in the masculine's present position so that energy of being in you know in the sun in the light illuminated um, is being carried forward for sure. So let's go back to the moon. So past position, um, the moon represents not knowing the truth, not seeing things clearly. Um, you feel that things are left hidden, unsaid. And so there was clarity, mental clarity with the Ace of Swords and, um, you know, illumination with the sun. So that seed is planted with the Ace of Pentacles and there's movement forward. So the chariot is moving forward with the thing that makes you happy, that makes you come alive. You know, and here I have, you know, a surfer de depicted here. And it's kind of cool. Uh, a memory just popped up of one night um, we went surfing. I 
with uh, my girlfriend and I, and it was a full moon, and um, I didn't actually go into the water, my friend did, and I just walked up and down the beach, being, you know, basking in the moonlight, and it was just so beautiful because on the west coast there's bioillumination, the water turns blue from the algae, and so as I'm walking, you know, I can see my steps behind me, and, um, you know, there, there's people in the water surfing, and, you know, it was just a really surreal moment, and that's what I felt here. It's like this, you know, even though things are dark and kind of scary, I mean, there's freaking sharks, you know, in the water, <laughs> right? There's, there's, um killer whales and stuff so I'm not going to get into the water at night hell no that's not happening um, so you know even though there's a sense that there's this scary stuff below the surface I really felt this beauty about the night about the moon about the ocean you know and it was so mystical and beautiful um, so that's the memory that I saw immediately but anyway there's this transition from dark to light and so in, in the middle, it's a movement, right? So this is overcoming obstacles, using that surfboard to maneuver yourself through the vortex, through the darkness. Uh, so near future is change. The environment, the 3D reality is changing. And it's because of a decision to move forward uh, towards the light, to live your truth, to be always in this state of illumination and happiness, right? So, you know, you have the choice to feel that way all the time. Or you could return to, you know, all this negativity from the past, right? But I really feel that the masculine is finally deciding to, um, to move on, live life the way he's always wanted to. Okay, so final outcome for the feminine, five of pentacles, or sorry, five of wands, obstacles and challenges. So this is overcoming obstacles, quite obviously, but it's a very small obstacle. It's not a big deal. So here's that, you know, a feeling of moving forward, but overcoming, right? It's, you know, this person who's on a tight wire rope isn't going to hesitate to walk over that tiny little crack in the road. So um, with steady movement and, you know, this resolve will carry you forward. Um, just, you know, this card also talks about finding a way to make your light shine brighter. Um, but I really feel that the feminine is, is stepping into a power in the future power and belief in self you are the master you know don't let that devil hold you back um, oh, anyway sorry okay so clarifiers wow king of wands oh my god 11 11 card and oh my god throat chakra okay so king of wands past position so here we have the Knight of Wands in the past. It's very fiery, very passionate, especially with all this sun here. So the King of Wands could represent a fire sign, but it could also be the masculine, you know, coming to the feminine in this powerful state, right? Um, we can see that definitely on his side. So there's this, you know, the King of Wands is the leader, um, is someone who's unchained, who is um very charismatic the center of attention right so that might be the blast of fire on the feminine side with the, the master you know it's like there's this roaring fire and passion that is being stirred on the masculine side and it will come to the feminine um but this is in the past position. So let's carry on though. Oh my god, I'm so OCD. Okay, so 11 11 card. Twin flame confirmation that 
this connection is coming to not all, but to some twin, uh, twin flames. You know, this fire energy is flame, fire, right? Passionate energy, spirituality. And so it's like this energy returns to the feminine's um, reality. Okay, and then the future position is the throat chakra. So, you know, this is communication and that that repeated um, theme of communication in the future um, keeps showing up. So um, either a fire sign will come to the feminine who is a twin flame um, or just the fact that the masculine was is recognized as a twin flame by the, the, the feminine and comes back um, and speaks his truth. You know, it's She's been waiting for communication. She's been waiting for the, you know, um, the return of her twin. And so, but I don't know what that have to, put, have to do with the five of wands, though. So I'm going to pull an Osho Zen card for that. What do you mean? by the five of wands, the king of wands, the eleven eleven calling card, and the throat chakra, all four cards, please spirit. What a nariness. So that's the eight of pentacles. So that's the third time the eight of pentacles has shown up uh, on the feminine side. You know, and the eight of pentacles is just positive movement forward. You know, feeling abundance coming in and using that abundance to continue to manifest. But there seems to be no progression to the Nine of Pentacles yet. And that would be like that goal that the feminine has been mo moving towards. Okay, so... Sometimes it happens that you become one in some rare moment. Watch the ocean, the tremendous wildness of it, and suddenly you forget your split, your schizophrenia. You relax. Oh my God, and I just finished telling you guys a story about the ocean. That's hilarious. Okay, so you relax. Or moving in the Himalayas, seeing the virgin snow on the Himalayan peaks, suddenly a coolness surrounds you and you need not be false because there is no other human beings to be false to. You fall together or listening to beautiful music you fall together whenever in whatsoever situation you become one. A peace, a happiness, a bliss surrounds you, uh, arises in you, you feel fulfilled. There is no need to wait for these moments. These moments can become your natural life. These extraordinary moments can become ordinary moments. That is the whole effort of Zen. You can live an extraordinary life in a very ordinary life, cutting wood, chopping wood, carrying water from the well. You can be tremendously at ease with yourself, cleaning the floor, cooking food, washing the clothes. You can be perfectly at ease because the whole question of you doing your action totally, enjoying, delighting in it, Okay, so ordinariness and just enjoying every moment, you know, being in it fully, right? And washing your hands and feeling the water flowing over you, you know, the warmth, the smell of it, the, you know, feeling the vapors um, when you inhale it. So, you know, that's really being in the moment. And it's almost like the feminine is going to come to a point where she's going to be, to have, she, where she's going to have to make a choice to move over that obstacle. And the way through it is to realize that there's nothing out there that you need to attain. You know, just be yourself, be who you are in the moment. And, uh, you know, don't. You know, what I'm feeling, it's almost like there's this build-up with the whole twin flame thing. And, you know, it's like, it's very easy to get swept away in daydreams and 
um, you know, expectations, right, about the whole twin flame union. And so I think this is like a, just a wake-up call or a warning to stay grounded, right, um, to not freak out <laughs> um, if, you know, union happens for some, and to, to communicate, to open yourself up. Um, yeah. All right, so for the masculine, final outcome is firm foundation, the four of pentacles. So we have a transition here, ace of pentacles, two pentacles, four of pentacles. Um, so groundedness, you know, the Himalayans, right? It's, it's kind of that same kind of message being repeated. Um, this person is by themselves, um, and there's this strength about him. You can't push over a mountain, it's unwavering. So I feel this solid groundedness with this card for sure. Five of Wands, Base Chakra, and Five of Cups. So we got two fives here. So that is, you know, transition energy, changes. Uh, the Five of Wands is a repeated card over here, so the Feminine got that as a main card here. This is a clarifier from the past. Um, so the Masculine overcomes these obstacles with the Chariot and moves forward. The Base Chakra, however, is again a lower chakra. Over here we have the Solar Plexus, which is number three. This is number one. However, I'm not feeling... I'm feeling a strong groundedness here that cannot, you know, cannot be rattled, I don't know, for lack of a better word, <laughs> sorry. Um, so the base chakra is a feeling of safety, security, uh, groundedness, but it could mean that you don't feel safe or secure, you feel tested. The Five of Cups, Future Position, this is mourning, loss, this is, you know, heartbreak, having your heart broken, feeling guarded. So, this obstacle will have repercussions. Um, it's, it's almost like all of these cards are screaming tower, all of them, you know, um, whatever is built on a faulty foundation was meant to come down, right? So a release of these chains is required by the map for the masculine. So I'm actually going to pull an Osho card for that too because these are heavy energies. Oh geez, okay. So one card fell out. Um, well, actually, three cards fell out, but this is the one that landed on the ground. So here we have traveling, the Eight of Wands. Uh, so for some masculines, this is movement. You know, this card talks about there not being a destination, that, you know, home is within yourself. There's nothing out there to, to, to attain. However, um, what I'm feeling here is a sense of the masculine moving, right? This is... Uh, um, this is manifesting energy. Uh, this card also is my second most important communication card. Uh, so it could, could be like Cupid's arrows or texting or phone calls. Um, but really, this card is manifesting. It's, you know, sending out intentions into the universe and then that energy coming back. So... The other two cards that showed up as well are two major arcanas. Oh, actually, no, this isn't a major arcana. It is, wow, rebirth, number 10. So repeated card over here. Okay, so this is, this card talks about three levels of consciousness. The camel represents the lowest level. This is someone who is unconscious, who reacts, 
who, you know, works a nine to five job and is obedient. The lion next stage is realizing how powerful you are, um, standing up against, you know, standing out in the crowd, um, you know, not being the sheep kind of thing. So it's realizing your power, okay? So here we see that sense of realization, realizing how powerful you are, and same thing on the feminine side. Um, and then the third level is a child, okay? So this is the purest form of awareness, consciousness. Um, there's no expectations, there's no attachments, there's no fear, worry, guilt, nothing. This child is dancing, is free, and, and that's repeated energy with the two sun cards, you know, that's a return to an innocence. Uh, in the Rider weight deck, the uh, sun card depicts a child, you know, riding a horse, butt naked kind of thing, just freedom. Um, so we can see this level of awareness happening here. And then the star card, silence, is actually, uh, it represents wish granted. However, here, um, this speaks about seeing your, your, your soul reflected in the stars. Um, being in this now state and, and that was kind of what I was feeling with the um, feminine side as well so there is a sense of a rebirth and like I said it comes with consequences but what I'm feeling is the masculine is strong um, and ready to conquer those mountains you know and it's it's like this return to innocence and freedom and then the state of peace and bliss. Okay, so I'm not going to read those. So what is the foundation? Is the nine of swords, suffering and silence. So feminine. Okay, actually ma masculine got the five, the seven. Uh, the feminine got the eight, uh, the ten, and... The masculine also got the 10, and here we got the 9. So as a foundation, there is a shared energy of separation, right? This person is standing on the edge of a cliff, and there's an ocean separating her from the masculine and vice versa. So check your energy. The 9 of Swords is um, fear, worry, guilt stress, anxiety, nightmares, night terrors, but the nine is nearing the end of that feeling. So that's what's grounding this connection right now at the foundation is a sense of separation. So one card for the feminine, four of cups, and masculine, two of swords. Okay, so the masculine needs to make a decision. Okay, and I was reading through the comments and it's like, well, you know, the masculine has been waiting to make a decision for a long time now, you know, five months or whatever. And the thing about that is that, you know, twin flame unions come in waves, right? So um, the first wave of union is, is going to be happening in September, apparently. Um, and then there's going to be a second wave, you know, six months after that and so on and so on. So everyone can't wake up all at one time, right? So for the first wave, those who are in communication, those who um, are, you know, nearing that sense of 3D, are at this final stages of deciding to, you know, making that making that decision for a new beginning. I feel very strongly that there, you know, this 3D union is going to happen, um, but. You know, this is the energy that's being carried into the union, the sense of waiting, waiting for a decision to be made. And the feminine over here is longing, waiting for that decision. So the Two of Swords is um, having two choices. It's cognitive dissonance. It's, you know, wanting to go down a road that it is for you or another road that is um, obligation. Do you know what I mean? It's like a sense of... Um, a split mind. Okay, so the masculine has two choices and he will 
make a decision to move forward, go down that road, you know, transform his life, put an end into things, and start a new uh, foundation. And on the feminine side, the Four of Cups is disconnect, boredom, feeling like things aren't moving fast enough, you know, offering your cup of love and them not receiving it. So I can definitely see how you guys are both suffering in silence. You know, um, as a foundation, there's been this disconnected energy that's being carried around by the two of you. All right, so crowning energy, Six of Cups, reunion, memories of love. So the Six of Cups is somebody from the past coming back. Um, it is, you know, somebody that you may have known from childhood or past life. In the John Holland deck here, this is, um, you know, having these memories that you hold dear to your heart. They're precious. You've chosen that one candle, that one light out of a gazillion and, you know, one that you love very deeply. Okay, so one card for the feminine. Oop. Okay, so two cards came out. So the Queen of Pentacles is could represent an Earth sign, um, but this you know is a Divine Feminine in the three D form, the one you can hold, feel, um, kiss, and caress. This also represents someone who is independent, uh, who's financially stable, free has abundance coming in and we can see that strongly with the eight of pentacles is it a groundedness that the queen of pentacles would have about her you know and this is a sense of looking after yourself so that coupled with the six of cups is what i'm really feeling here is 3d union um the three of cups is union energy and so this is an ignition you know, it's um, love being created from two people coming together. And so it's celebrating love. So the feminine is grounded. She's holding these memories close to her heart. She's excited about love and the possibility of coming together in 3D. Um, so, you know, although there's, a, there's this deep sense of disconnection, there's still love, deep love there. Okay, so for the masculine, wow. So he got the Emperor, Divine Masculine card. Um, so this is the Divine Masculine living his true authentic life, knowing his power, feeling, you know, that sun, that courage, that strength, that Divine Masculine um, who's living their authentic life would feel, you know, this empowerment. So, crowning energy, um, the memories that the masculine holds is making him realize who he is, or the idea of a reunion is motivating the masculine to find himself, his truth within. And, uh, yeah, so... A desire for reunion is what I see here. Okay, so what is the feminine bringing into the union? Four of Cups, Disconnect and Boredom. So that's the same card that right here, right? So the feminine is bringing this twice. So this is focusing on the dark not seeing the, this rainbow of colors behind you, touching your foot, you know, so disconnected. She feels like things aren't moving. King of Cups, Seven of Swords, and the Hermit. Okay, so King of Cups pass it, position. This could represent a water sign. Okay, but I, I think it has something to do with this Ten of Cups over here, and you know this feeling of deep love and satisfaction, this pure love. The King of Cups is someone who loves very deeply, um, and you know, so it's an unconditional love. All right, so there was a disconnect here from this love in the past, and so the feminine presently is questioning. The Seven of Swords is the exact same card over here, so there's mirroring happening here, not 
knowing if you can trust this love fully, if you're being deceived, if you're being lied to, if you're being betrayed. Um, so Spirit is asking the feminine to withdraw, to be the hermit, to seek solitude again, you know, stay in that state of stillness. You know, as, as soon as you attach yourself to this idea, um, it is the chain that will pull you down. All right, so um, love unconditionally. Okay, so what is masculine bringing in? Six of Wands, victory and success. I mentioned this card earlier. You know, this is the rock star being placed on the pedestal, feeling illuminated. Um, and people are proud of you. They see you as an example. So he feels very successful and empowered. Again, repeated theme here. Star card. Seven of Pentacles. And... The Fool. Wow. Okay, so star card, past position, wish granted. So this card showed up over here as a final outcome. Okay, so the masculine has healed his heart, has gone through a very difficult period of time, right? Um, and so has been through the state of, of healing. Um, so this is hope. This is saying that the worst is over now okay so that's in the past that's why he feels successful the seven of pentacles however is in his present position this is um you know the pregnant pause waiting for the ships to return um you know and here i have a feminine waiting on the beach with a surfboard there waiting for the tides to turn um so this could be the feminine waiting again feeling disconnected um, impatient, um, or, you know, you know, there's a, a sense that the, the ships are about to return because of this successful energy and the fool card in the future. So the fool card is zero. It's starting from zero. Uh, it is a birth, like a child being born, has no expectations. Again, the same energy, no attachments. So it's starting a brand new life and taking a leap of faith. So again, we have that sense of a new beginning happening in the future. Okay, so that is what the masculine is bringing into the union. So heart-centered energy, sacrifice. So this is a hangman. Um, so this is self-sacrifice letting go of things that you no longer need um and it's illumination as well you can see how the crown chakra is open this also talks about letting go surrendering you know letting go of control so it's a shared energy between um, the feminine and masculine here so they are both surrendering they are both um changing their perspective. So one card for the feminine, temperance, and the queen of swords. Okay, so temperance card is the ultimate union card for twin flames for me. Um, so temperance is zero point. It's the, you know, the winding of the double helix. It's um, the souls recombining. She also represents now, being in the now in patience. Again, with that repeated theme of being in this waiting, um, you know, being in the moment uh, for the feminine. So it is a struggle for her. She is keeping herself out of that mental prison. However, it's, it's taking her effort to do that. The Queen of Swords could represent an air sign. Um, so we had the King of Swords over here on the feminine past position. So it is open, honest communication, but also the Queen of Swords um, will say what, whatever's on her mind. She is um, someone who sees through bullshit and tells it like it is, not holding anything back, okay? So very cutting words, or, um, you know, this is also detachment from emotions in order to express yourself, communicate, make decisions. It's mental clarity. So I'm going to pull an Osho card for that Queen of Swords.
exhaustion, nine of wands. So in previous readings, I use the Queen of Swords as, you know, depicting a karmic partnership or relationship. And I, you know, there's nothing against air signs, you guys, please. Um, this has nothing, the Queen of Swords and the way I interpret it has nothing to do with air signs. I know that air signs are beautiful, loving people. This is the energy that I'm speaking of, okay? So the Queen of Swords, like I said, is somebody who is detached emotionally. And so you need to be in that state if you want to release something, if you want to let go, if you want to sacrifice. Um, so this could be the masculine releasing ten of swords, letting go, moving on, um, releasing something. So the nine of wands, exhaustion. This is being caught in the machine. Okay. So this is a portrait of one whose whole life energy has been depleted in his efforts to keep fueling the enormous and ridiculous machine of self-importance and productivity. He has been so busy keeping it all together and making sure everything runs smoothly that he has forgotten to really rest. No doubt he can't allow himself to be playful, to abandon his duty for a trip to the beach. Could mean the whole structure might come tumbling down. The message of this card is not just about being a workaholic, though, or sorry, though, it is about all the ways in which we set up safe but unnatural routines for ourselves, and by doing so, keep the chaotic and spont spontane uh, spontaneous away from our doors. Life isn't a business to be managed. It is a mystery to be lived. It, it's time to tear up the time card, break out of the factory, and take a little trip into uncharted territories. Um, your work can flow more smoothly from a relaxed state of mind. Okay, so surrendering, let it go of control is what I'm feeling here. And, and finally, releasing yourself from that machine. You know, living your truth. You know, going down that road, doing what you desire. All right, so overall energy. But wow, crown chakra. So this is the bottom of the deck. This is the connection that um, you have with Source, with the collective consciousness and with your twin. It is the highest level of awareness. Um, this is I know, right? So it is knowing your truth and consciousness is what I'm feeling. Both, you know, the entire reading is about the crown chakra. It is about illumination um, and living your truth. Okay, so I am going to pull two cards from Myths and Mermaids and I'll read those to you for the final message from the universe. Okay, so for the feminine first, our Kimboldo mermaid, and for the masculine, shipwreck siren. Okay. Alone we drift, distractedly, a party drawn apart. Together, in, we are invincible, a living work of art. So yeah party drawn apart, the feeling of separation. At first glance, she's a pretty mermaid lass, gazing soulfully with her large pale eyes. A closer inspection reveals a myriad of fish and other ocean dwellers that comprise her luxuriant tail, com combining to create a living work of art. The sum of your parts, lately you've been experiencing feeling self-deprecation. Maybe you have been studying your figure with a dissatisfied eye or bemoaning the size of your feet. You need to stop hypocritical analyzing before you sink any lower. You are so much more than the collection of your parts. Other people do not look at you through the lens of a microscope. It is unhealthy to do so yourself. 
Concentrate instead on the beautiful person you are as a whole and treat yourself with love and affection. Okay, so 40. Shipwreck Siren for the masculine. Sing me, Siren, of those lustfully depraved, of gluttony, excitement, and vanity displayed. Sing to me, Siren, of excess and greed, of slothful indulgence and heady mead. Sing to me, Siren, of debauchery and fame, of riches and shiny things. I'll stand fast yet again. A deceptive Siren smiles uh, gently at her victims. Behind her, however, we see her true intentions. She has lured an unsuspecting ship's crew towards the jetting rock of her island. She tests the wills of those she seeks and takes advantage of weak and undisciplined. The meaning, exercise your discipline. Soon your willpower will be tested and you will have to employ great discipline to make it through the rough seas ahead. And that's exactly what I'm seeing with the sign, right? This the sense of movement with the chariot going over the ocean, right? Really going for it. Um, okay, so Ulysses was tested by siren songs. You, will, you shall have to seal yourself against great temptation. This is a time to prove to the world that you're made of stronger stuff and can withstand whatever is thrown your way. Maintain a strict schedule, moderate your consumption, curb your appetite, and be prepared to be tested when you least expect it. Take some time to contemplate the vices you're most susceptible to and where you might be weak. If you maintain disciplined focus and dedication to your goal and ideals, you will sail through the tough times with your head held high and you will be stronger, healthier person because of it. So yeah, sail through the rough seas. Okay, so I hope this helped you guys. I love you so, so much. Um, all right, we'll see you on the 31st or is there three one days? Anyways, all right, love you guys, peace.